travellers to return to Victoria, but how safe are quarantine hotels? A whistleblower speaks out. Also, a dramatic end to an underground adventure. Dozens pulled from the Yarra. A racetrack honour for Michael Gadinsky as a superstar offers his own unique tribute. Buyers do battle in another big weekend for real estate, but when will the bubble burst? And festival fight back, how Melbourne's embraced a COVID-safe mover. Live from Melbourne, 7 News with Mike Amor starts now. Good evening. There's growing pressure tonight for Victoria to reopen hotel quarantine to return travellers as more and more people are vaccinated against COVID-19. But a whistleblower claims the system is still flawed, highlighting what he says are attempts to flout the rules. A bumper morning at Booper Donvale, the oldest resident, 102, all in for round one of the COVID vaccine. Great-grandmother Maureen says she barely felt a thing. It was just a little prick, that's all. I didn't even feel that. <laughs> well, I think it's a wonderful thing to know that the world is free of this terrible virus. 12,800 Victorians have now received a first dose. As more frontline workers get theirs, international flights are a stronger chance of resuming. But the government won't confirm reports. Our hotel quarantine program will restart next weekend. We're not going to be rushing into uh, receiving uh, international visitors uh, until the time is right. One international visitor has added to our COVID case numbers. A flight crew member testing positive on arrival. Melbourne still receives freight flights. But a whistleblower has doubts about the system's safety. Finney Matthew quit his nursing job in the hotel quarantine program last week. He claims he was harassed, told to be quiet after calling out illegal rostering during staff shortages. One or two of the staff has done three to four hotels in a week. COVID quarantine Victoria tells 7 News it's not aware of nurses working across multiple sites. His former employer, Healthcare Australia, says nursing staff work only at the hotel they are allocated to and requests for extra shifts are for existing staff at that particular hotel. It's the same company involved in the accidental vaccine overdose in Queensland. The response from one of the main manager or the person was it's none of your business. Mr Matthew reported his concerns to WorkSafe and the Ombudsman. Things are hard to be changed or we are risking everyone else. I'm sure the government will be taking that, that matter up. Obviously the individual has also uh, taken the matter up through appropriate channels. So I'm sure this won't be uh, the end of it. A bit of extra pressure tonight on the AstraZeneca that's going to be made locally. That's because France could join Italy in blocking another shipment of the vaccine that was due to come to Australia. The European Union claims it's not targeting Australia specifically, but with only 5.5% of the EU population receiving a first dose, there is internal pressure there to speed up their program. The Melbourne-made AstraZeneca vaccine at CSL should be ready to go in 16 days. Mike? Blake, thank you. A registered sex offender is on the run and believed to be hiding out in Melbourne. Tegan Doling is across the details and Tegan police lo lost contact with him weeks ago. Mike, Paul Craft was last seen in January when he was picking up his property from a police station. As part of his reporting duties, the 55-year-old needs to update police on his address and he's failed to do that. They believe he's now hiding from them and is known to hang around the Sandringham, Bow Morris and Black Rock areas. We don't believe Paul Craft to be a dangerous person. However, we do ask if the public sees him, uh, don't approach him, simply call triple zero and we'll send someone to see him. Mike, they've also renewed their calls for Robert Crilly to hand himself in. The 36-year-old Shepherd man is also a registered sex offender and, in, and is ignoring police calls to come forward. They believe he could be in Coburg, Mike, or even Pascoe Vale. Tegan Doling, live at police headquarters. Thank you. It's been a tragic start to the long weekend on our roads with three lives lost in separate crashes. Two of the people killed were motorcyclists, including the rider involved in this collision at Emerald. He hit a turning vehicle and died at the scene. The car driver is assisting police. It's been a night of drama on the Yarra, with police helping to guide dozens of underground explorers from the river. But the group has today hit back, claiming they didn't need saving and were walking through storm water drains for fun. 
One by one, up to 30 people wade through water at chest height out of a storm drain on Flinders Street and into the Yarra River. Met by dozens of police officers and a crowd of onlookers, this was their final destination after exploring the city's stormwater drain system. Some were assessed by paramedics, dressed in suits or even long dresses. One man had the forethought to pack a change of clothes. We wanted to come out looking classy. <laughs> Members of the group told Seven News they didn't need to be rescued and they were never in any danger, claiming they're part of a subculture who've been exploring the drains for decades. It's unclear how far they travelled underneath the city. Other urban explorers have told Seven News it's likely the group entered the drain system somewhere else along the Yarra, as the majority of the city's access points are locked and hard to get into. The youngest in the group was 20 years old, the eldest 56. Police issued no fines or warnings, but did offer advice on the risks of their actions. Georgia Commons solely, Seven News. The late Michael Gudinski has been honoured in a most fitting way at Flemington. Georgia Comensoli joins us live in Georgia. He loved racing and one of his horses secured an emotional victory today. Mike, Michael Gudinski was a part owner in Homesman, the horse that's won the Australia Cup at today's Autumn Racing Carnival. In a touching tribute to the music legend, his son was given the honour of leading the horse after the race. Gudinski was an avid racing fan and had previously won three Melbourne Cups. His co-owner, Nick William, gave a touching tribute at the track. Most importantly, his son is there leading the horse in. And all I want to say is, there's only one Michael Gudinski. <laughs> Also world-famous musician, Ed Sheeran has posted an extraordinary tribute revealing he has a life-size statue of Gidinski in his house. Sheeran described a father-like bond with the music guru, saying his legacy is unmatchable and will live on for hundreds of years. To me and many others, he's the heart of Australian music and always will be. Sheeran says the statue started as a joke but now brings him comfort following the 68-year-old's death this week. Mike? Georgia, thank you. Melbourne's hot property market isn't set to slow down anytime soon. Buyers continue to snap up homes well above reserves, securing an auction clearance rate of 86%. The competition for this two-bedroom Cheltenham villa was strong. And 80, and what do we say, 81? And 90, and what do we say, 91? 800, they've been at $800,000. But not even the agent expected the original bungalow to sell for $111,000 above reserve. Market is as hot as it's ever been, so it's it's literally like a like a shotgun's just been fired, and, and everyone's just running. It was this couple's lucky day. Jelly, jelly, and sold. Congratulations! They paid eight hundred and sixty thousand dollars for their first home, and still plan to renovate. Just the way the market's been, um, I mean, you set your expectation for what you'd like to pay, and then you sort of take a realistic approach and add ten or fifteen percent. Unfortunately. And they're not alone. This property at Surrey Hills sold for 730000 above reserve at auction today. This one at Oakley for 400000 above reserve. While interstate buyers paid $131,000 more at Sunshine. The question now is if the property bubble will burst. Experts say that just won't happen, with the market showing no signs of slowing down. There's no evidence to suggest that we're going to see a reduction in prices. It's really just a little bit different this year because the market started earlier than it normally does. Jody Lee, 7 News. Workers could be affected by the fallout from the Christian Porter rape scandal. The Attorney General's leave of absence means an industrial relations bill could be shelved, delaying important workplace protections for months. A government keen to shift the focus from allegations to foundations. The Home Builder program has exceeded all of our expectations. But the rape accusation against Christian Porter continues to plague the coalition. With him on mental health leave, the industrial relations reforms he was spearheading are on shaky ground. It's almost impossible without the Attorney General. Key crossbenchers want a planned vote on the IR bill, scheduled for mid-March, to be put off, joining Labor in calling for an independent investigation. I would imagine Mr Porter wants to clear his name as well and remove that cloud. Despite steadfast denials of any wrongdoing, that cloud continues to grow as more details of the alleged victim's version of events surface. Extracts from part of a statement she planned to give police before her death last year reveals the woman 
dissociating badly in order to cope during the alleged 1988 attack, reassuring herself the next day it was OK. But how, in the years after, she struggled to cope, writing, the nightmare is back. While police have closed the case against Mr Porter and Scott Morrison continues to reject calls for an independent inquiry, MPs from all sides say the allegations and those raised by Brittany Higgins have done nothing to encourage more women to enter politics. It's certainly been some of the feedback that I've been getting. People saying, why would I want to go into that? Something the PM hopes the review into Parliament's workplace culture will help repair. Rob Scott. Two accused thieves are behind bars tonight following a string of ram raids on city boutiques. Police arrested the pair yesterday, but one insists they have the wrong man. It's the breakthrough police needed after a string of crimes in Collins Street. Detectives believe they've found the men responsible for three ram raids on designer boutiques. The luxury stores smashed and robbed over three weeks. Most recently, Dior on Monday. You going to see Yesterday, detectives raided four homes in northern suburbs and allegedly seized designer clothing and accessories. A 49-year-old Kensington man and 43-year-old Essendon man were arrested and charged with a number of offences committed while on bail. As well as the ram raids on three boutiques, the pair is accused of trying to rob another Collins Street store. They're also charged over a smash and grab at Essendon and thefts from businesses at Williamstown and Flemington. In applying for bail today, one of the men told the court police had the wrong man. But officers say he's seen clearly on CCTV. Both men were refused bail and will appear next week. Josh Rebridge, 7 News. A Victorian couple has been identified as the victims of a light plane crash in rural Western Australia. Mel Watt and Samantha Nuttall died when their micro light came to a, gr a grief near Exmouth in Western Australia on Wednesday. The cause is under investigation. Just days after menacing Queensland, Tropical Cyclone Niren is tonight a Category 5 monster battery New Caledonia. Locals are taking refuge in evacuation shelters as the system passes overhead with winds gusting at up to 250 kilometres an hour. The cyclone is expected to weaken as it moves offshore later this evening. Moomba may have been rebooted this year, but that hasn't stopped the crowds. Melina Saras has been checking out the carnival in Mel. The tradition continues. It does, Mike. There is certainly a buzz around the city this year. The festival is spread out to keep everyone safe. There's carnival rides here at Alexandra Gardens, which you needed to pre-book, but there's plenty of other free events, including performances and street art across Melbourne's laneways. It might look different this year, but this still feels like Moomba. Yeah, it was really fun. It feels fun. like you're going upside down even though you're not. Oh my God. The festival almost didn't happen. It was cancelled, then revived. The reduced program didn't phase the crowds. It's good to get Melbourne back on track. And we were over excited to come here today and we're probably coming back tomorrow. It meant decades long family traditions could continue. It came every year when I was little but this is his first time. Tickets had to be pre-booked and sold out with 12,000 people allowed through the gates each day. And we're lucky to get them when we did. There's no Birdman rally, parade or water skiing but plenty of other activities. It's probably the scariest and funnest rides I've been on since I was born. From the carnival to courtside seats at the basketball to face off with some legends of the game. Uncertain whether we'd actually be here, but it's great. It's a fantastic event here. It's great to see people out and enjoying themselves. It's a beautiful day. Melbourne doesn't get much better than this. What a way to kick off the Moomba Festival with perfect blue skies and plenty of sunshine. Tomorrow is looking pretty spectacular as well. I'll have all those details later in the bulletin, Mike. See you soon. Thanks, Mel. The Melbourne Football Club's been accused of sending the wrong message amid, amid a gender equity controversy. Tom Brown has more details. And, Tom, the Melbourne Coterie Group is holding its launch at a male members-only club. Mike, that's right there. President Glenn Bartlett made a very public gesture regarding gender equality last month, officially changing his club title from chairman to president. Well, on Tuesday night, their coterie group, which is for their high net worth supporters, their officially co official coterie group, will hold its season launch at the Australian Club, which is only open to male members. Bartlett, I've confirmed, will attend that event. And a gender equality expert thinks it sends the wrong message. 
It sends the absolute worst message in the world to female fans and to women who play AFL and the men, many men who support them to have a season launch at a club that openly says it only allows women as guests, that it only has male members. Mike, to emphasise, I've spoken to the Melbourne Footy Club tonight. Men and women will attend that coterie event at the Australian Club on Tuesday night. They're just, according to the club, using it as function space. But interestingly, they don't have any females currently on their executive, so it will create some discussion. Separately creating discussion are the crowds for round one, in particular the capacity, Mike. Some modest crowds so far for the practice games. On, Tuesday, on Thursday night, around 10,200, just 10,300 for the Tigers and Collingwood. The capacity here at GMHBA tonight, about 18,000. I've spoken to the Tigers concerning round one. Members are lapping up the tickets and any excess will become available to the general public. There's no doubt it's great that fans can get back to the footy, Mike. I'll have the latest here from Geelong shortly in sport. Yeah, I was there last night, Tom. It was great. And there are some injury worries at Collingwood. Andrew McCormack is here and Macca, a star midfielder, lasted just five minutes last night. Well, Mike, he's racing the clock to be fit for round one. Still side bottom. Checked in for scans this morning. We'll hear from the Magpie star ahead in sport. Plus, a young hawk bag six of the best, putting his name up for an incredible round one debut. And Mike, some bizarre scenes involving Jason Day on the US okay. tour, something you don't often see. We'll have more on that later in sport. Got me intrigued. Thanks, Macca. If you spend a lot of time on the roads, there's bad news ahead. Traffic congestion is about to get worse. Up next, what's being done to take the pressure off commuters? Also, more bombshell claims to rock the royals, why Meghan Markle was banned from speaking out. A historic first for the Pope, his mission and message in the Middle East. And a landmark for a special piece of... and the demons face their mortal enemies. The Saints. Two red-hot teams head-to-head. -head. The showdown that will show no mercy. Magnificent! Demons versus Saints. AFLW. Tonight on 7, 8 and 7 Plus. Love them. Aussie made dog treats. 100% pure love. Show them you love them. Our homes, they see it all. The happy days, the tough days, and the really unexpected days. And it's even better when that home is yours. If you have the will, we have the way. Bank of Melbourne. There's inspiration everywhere when it comes to colour. Through your day, when you go out, you're looking around, you see trees, you see plants, you see buildings, you see somebody else's house. You think, hey, that would look good on my place. Wherever you get your color inspiration from, we have a color to match here at Bunnings. So go find the colors that inspire you, and we'll help put it in a can. Bunnings Warehouse! Bring your color inspiration to life. Get more of what you need to lose weight with the new MyWW Plus app. It helps you see that exercise can be the best part of your day. It really takes the thinking out of healthy eating. More holistic, more personalised, more weight loss. Join now and get three months free. At Nick Scarley, the Murano three-seater with chaise was $39.90, now half price $19.95, 100% leather $19.95. The Nick Scarley Autumn Sale, in-store and online now. Whatever you bet on, take it to the Neds level. Take it to the Nets level. Hey, what if we took the show on the road today? Did you hear someone else got stuck there the other day? They don't learn, mate. There's a giant <laughs> sign that says the height. <laughs> it's... I reckon Gary would make it under. Jason PJ in the morning. Kiss 101.1.
If you have noticed Melbourne's gridlock seems to be getting worse, you're right. Workers returning to the office are placing undue pressure on our roads and there's a warning of more congestion to come. One of the world's most livable cities, but far from the best to drive in. And now there's proof Melbourne's congestion has all but returned to normal. On the night before our snap five-day lockdown, traffic was back up to 99% of pre-COVID levels. It dipped during stage four to 68%. But over the past week, it rebounded to 94%. My message is, you know, get out of the motor vehicle. It's good for you to be on public transport. It's less stressful. You could be like me and get some work done on the way into work as well. With three quarters of workers now allowed back in the office, gridlock's expected to get worse than it was before the pandemic. The state government saw it coming. It's invested $340 million on road projects, some completed during last year's lockdown. And there's $26 million to update a third of the city's trams, keeping as many as possible on the tracks until the new fleet arrives in 2025. The wiring gets old, we have to replace it. We're looking at the brake controller, we're looking at the gong, as you've heard before. The, the, the driver's uh, air conditioning system needs to be improved. So all the things that could stop a tram, we're addressing to make sure that they don't. Jody Lee, 7 News. The Duchess of Sussex has described how she lost her freedom when she joined the royal family, saying she's relieved at finally being able to speak out. But while the countdown is on to a bombshell Oprah Winfrey interview, Buckingham Palace is focusing its attention elsewhere. And Building the anticipation one sneak peek at a time. I called you <laughs> either February or March 2018 before the wedding. Mm-hmm asking, uh, would you please give me an interview? Interview Queen Oprah's long-awaited tell-all with a duchess who's now shunned royalty. I wasn't even allowed to have that conversation with you personally. In the latest preview, it's all Meghan, free from royal minders and, in her own words, finally able to speak out. What is right about this time? Um, well, so many things. Um, that we're on the other side of a lot of a lot of life experience mm -hmm. that's happened and also that we have the ability to make our own choices mm -hmm. in a way that I couldn't have said yes to you then. That mm -hmm. wasn't my choice to make. For the former actress, royal life was far from a fairy tale. As an adult who lived a really independent life to then go into this construct that is um, different than mm -hmm. I think what people imagine it to be. Now she's unburdened by duty and protocol. It's really liberating to be able to have the right and the, the privilege in some ways to be able to say yes. I mean, and, and to I'm ready to talk. And to say it for yourself. To say it for and yourself. And not to have to consult with anybody at this point. Yeah, to yes. be able to just make a choice on your own and just be able to speak for yourself. The release of the trailer follows claims of bullying levelled at Meghan by royal staff. Her celebrity friends leaping to her defence online with words of support. But royal officials say the focus of the family remains on the health of Prince Philip. He's been transferred again back here to the private King Edward the Seventh Hospital after a successful heart procedure, a move away from one of the country's biggest critical care centres considered a good sign. The 99-year-old Duke left St Bartholomew's Hospital in an ambulance. He'll continue his recovery for the next few days, healing as the royal family prepares for more anguish. In London, Sarah Greenolch, 7 News. Pope Francis has called for an end to violence and extremism on day one of his trip to war-torn Iraq. It's the first time the pontiff has ever visited the country with a mission to revive the dwindling Christian community. A pilgrim of peace. Pope Francis lands in war-torn Iraq, defying security fears and a global pandemic. His mission to revive the country's ancient and dwindling Christian community. Hundreds line the streets of Baghdad celebrating the first ever palpal visit. For many, his four-day visit is a sign the country is emerging from its long civil war, a war of violent religious extremists. The Pope spent his first day praying at the church where worshippers and priests were gunned down by Islamic militants in 2010. Their deaths are a powerful reminder that inciting war, hateful attitudes, violence or the shedding of blood 
are incompatible with authentic religious teaching. His message of peace welcomed at the presidential palace. Security here is tight and a curfew is in place across the city. Over the next few days, the 84-year-old will travel the country meeting with officials and visiting the city of Mosul, still in ruins from battles with ISIS, urging Christians to help rebuild after years of war and persecution. Georgia Holland, 7 News. One of Melbourne's best-loved landmarks has reached a special anniversary. The Royal Botanic Gardens are turning 175. There'll be a series of events to mark the occasion, including workshops, exhibitions and cultural walks. Celebrating uh, 175 years, but plus the millennia uh, of uh, the history of this site. The full program is available on the Gardens website. Melina Saris is back live from Moomba and Mel, the weather has really turned it on this long weekend. It really has, Mike. It's absolutely beautiful down here on the banks of the Yarra. The city started on 14 degrees and although we only made it to a top of 20, it felt nice and warm under this sunshine. We had blue skies around the suburbs as well and temperatures were in the low 20s. It was 21 at the airport, 22 degrees at Viewbank. Coldstream shot up to 24 late in the day and it is heating up tomorrow. I'll have the full forecast right after sport, Mike. Sounds good. Thanks, Mel. Red tape has left a couple trapped in long-distance limbo for a year and no-one will help. They've been forced to live thousands of kilometres apart and want you to hear their story. That's next. Plus, a dumping site gets the green light to accept toxic soil from the Westgate Tunnel. One year on, how a high country attraction is fighting back from the flame. And masking up for Mardi Gras. Live details coming up from the SCG. children to be proud of me. Can this single mum outrun a superhero? Go! Unbelievable! Go! Ultimate Tag starts tomorrow at 7 on 7. Are you craving a big burger? Well, ours are a foot long. You won't need fries with that. The iconic Subway footlong sub. Subway. Eat fresh. So, how's the new job, Mr Brewer? I actually really love it. I feel like I'm making a difference every day. It can be testing at times, but I'm really glad I made that switch. Sounds so good. Dad! Still get plenty of time with this one too. Become one of the 4,000 new teachers across Victoria. Are you in? Visit vic.gov.au forward slash teach the future to make the switch. Authorised by the Victorian Government, Melbourne. I like a bar of chocolate, please. Happy birthday, Mum. There's a glass and a half in everyone. Oh, moving house. Take some stress out of moving with Origins Move Promise. Phew. Call 13 Move or search Origin Move. Origin. Good energy. Growing your own food is in the bag with Rich Grow's new Winter Grow Bag, a premium planting mix to create the Rich Grow effect. Simply plant directly into the bag for the best winter veggie. Grab a grow bag today and grow you good things. Peace of mind. <laughs> It's hard to find these days. Seriously? Fortunately, Blend 20 kills 99.9% .9 of germs and viruses, including COVID-19. Glen 20. It's peace of mind you can hold on to. season sale with savings on a huge range like up to 40% off bedroom and up to 50% off big brand mattresses. Hurry, it's ending soon. Kmart Furniture, limited time only. 
There's a new twist in the Westgate Tunnel toxic soil saga. Environmental authorities have given, given the green light to plan to dump the contaminated soil at Buller. That's despite having already approved and then revoked a previous application. If successful this time, it would mean tunnel boring could continue under Yarraville. The project was expected to be finished in 2022, but the toxic soil issue has caused that timeline to blow out. A young couple separated by the international border closure is battling government red tape in a desperate bid to be reunited. They say exemption requests have been knocked back 60 times, but they won't give up. Okay. Memories of a happy couple together, now devastated and separated, 17,000 kilometres apart. Okay, have a good night. I love you. I love you too, baby. Danielle LaMatina has been in a long-distance relationship with partner Alex Schinder in the US for two and a half years. He's visited here twice and I've been there six times in the year and a half that we were allowed to travel. But since the borders shut, Mr Shinder has tried to get permission to move from New Jersey to Melbourne. 30 to 40 exemption refusals later, we, we started working with a migration agent. Then we moved to applying for the de facto and then we got told that because we haven't lived together for 12 months, which is obviously difficult being in different countries, that it wasn't satisfying to them either. 240 pages of, of evidence proving our status, call logs, text logs, dated photographs, um, certified legal documents from friends and families corroborating our story. Australian Border Force stands by its strict criteria and says if the couple wants to reunite, Ms Lamatina is free to move to the US or apply to visit for at least three months. We want to start our lives together in Australia. I want to work in Australia. I want to pay taxes in Australia. We want to start a family together. The 32-year-old has already been vaccinated against COVID, unlike some celebrities and international athletes who have already been allowed in. We're constantly looked at as a statistic and a case number. And we're not that. We're more than that. We're in love. I truly feel that if it continues going this way, I will be a statistic, but in a completely different way. Tegan Dolling, 7 News. It's taken two weeks, but the Mars rover has finally gone for a drive on the red planet's surface. It wasn't a very long trip, just 6.5 metres in a half-hour test spin. A photo captured its wheeled tread marks left in the Mars dirt. NASA scientists say the mission went well and was a huge milestone for the rover. Construction is underway to rebuild a popular snow resort after it was burnt down in last summer's bushfire crisis. It's been a winter playground for families since the 70s. Now it's being restored with a state-of-the-art twist. A year since the fires that consumed the high country, the landscape still tells the tale of those terrible few days. While the physical scars are slowly fading, the mental scars still run deep. Smashed. Absolutely smashed and uh, there's, there's a thought of will it happen again? Selwyn Snow Resort was one of the many casualties of the disaster. Almost nothing was left standing. Thank God no one was here but it was definitely an awful day for the community. But the Alpine icon is rising from the rubble. Work on the new visitors centre has begun. A sleek L-shaped design made from fire resistant material and floor to ceiling windows. There'll be a new snow play area featuring a toboggan park, tube carousel and bumper cars. Selwyn's snowmaking capabilities will also be doubled, becoming the first resort in the Southern Hemisphere to have new state-of-the-art snow guns. Before the bushfires, these slopes would attract up to 2,000 people a day. The resort's owners are hopeful that most of the construction will be done in time to reopen this season. And these runs will be packed once again bringing life back to the mountain and money back into the local economy. Rob Scott, 7 News. Just like Moomba in Melbourne, Sydney has been forced to reinvent Mardi Gras to make the celebration COVID safe. Amber Lader is across the details in Amber. It's the first time the event will be held without the parade. Yes, Mike, this is the first time in 43 years there'll be no official parade down Oxford Street. There are no floats. And for the first time, it is 
isn't free. This is a ticketed event here at the SCG. Its festivities have now gotten underway. This sellout and very colourful crowd will spend the next few hours cheering on 120 different groups who will each do a lap of the SCG in their very bright and very revealing costumes. But Mardi Gras was still visible on Oxford Street today. Several hundred people marched in support of LGBTQI plus rights after the gathering was granted an exemption from the state's current COVID-19 rules. Here at the SCG, there are a number of COVID safe protocols in place, including staggered arrivals and departures. There are also temperature checks, but the COVID marshals certainly have a tough task ahead of them, keeping everybody in their seats tonight, Mike. Pamela Laidler at a very loud SCG. Thank you very much. There's disturbing new information on rideshare drivers with concerns over just who is behind the wheel. Details next. Up in flames, a fire emergency in Melbourne's north. How hairdressers are joining the front line in a health fight. And the sky's the limit. COVID safe competition. When it comes to being green, we do our best. Nobody's 100% perfect, but at least your power can be 100% carbon neutral. Join PowerShop, Australia's first certified carbon neutral energy retailer. At Ladbroke, our aim is to make racing even more exciting. Introducing our new Chief Entertainment Officer, Mike Iceberg. I'm here to show you all how to Ladbroke it. Let's lad broke the action! That's not safe. Let's lad broke the riders. Lad broke the winners! Let's lad broke the winners! Most people think all shampoos are the same at dandruff removal. But Head & Shoulders not only gets rid of dandruff, it also cleanses, protects and moisturises your scalp for up to 100% dandruff protection. I recommend Head & Shoulders. Prices are falling like leaves during the next Garley Autumn Sale. Save up to 40% on a huge selection of quality living, dining and bedroom furniture. The next Garley Autumn Sale, in store and online now. There's a glass and a half in everyone. At Aware Super, we are inspired by our members to breathe life into our communities. We believe you can do well for yourself at the same time as doing good for all. As one of Australia's best performing super funds, we deliver strong long-term returns for our members at the same time as investing in affordable housing, renewable energy and critical infrastructure. Become Aware today. At Ladbrokes, our aim is to make racing even more exciting. Introducing our new Chief Entertainment Officer, Mike Iceberg. I'm here to show you all how to Ladbroke it. Let's Ladbroke the action! That's not safe. Let's Ladbroke the riders. Ladbroke the winners! Let's Ladbroke the Bring on the dirtiness, muddiness, sauciness. And how did that get under there-iness? Because with a great range of cleaning solutions, Godfrey's gives you cleanliness. Almost 3,000 rideshare drivers with criminal records may be operating in Melbourne thanks to a bureaucratic bungle. It's been revealed that the system that cross-checks drivers' names with the police database stopped working two years ago. 
The roads minister concedes that's unacceptable. Essentially it was a uh, IT glitch that has seen this occur. It has been addressed, but now we've got to go through the data. There'll also be an independent review. An inferno has taken hold of a shed in Diamond Creek. Fire crews were called to the Murray Street property around 3am. It took almost an hour to bring the blaze under control. The cause is being investigated. It's not unusual for people to spill their secrets in the salon. And now a new campaign hopes to harness the relationship between hairdressers and clients to tackle domestic violence. Staff are being trained to identify warning signs and help victims seek support. While scooping up gold, silver and bronze in the pool, family life for Lisa Curry was very different. We used to hide behind, you know, cupboard doors while we heard it and watched it. Lisa grew up with domestic violence. And I love my dad, but at the same time, what happened with mum and dad was hideous. It was horrible. Along with hairdresser husband Mark Tabone, Lisa's helping recruit hairdressers with hearts. Hairdressers are literally licensed to touch and there's a huge bond that's created between a hairdresser and, a, and their client. Sonia Colvin saw an opportunity to tap into that sanctity of the hairdressing salon. I'd worry about them at night time. I'd feel sick that they were being violated in their own home. Empowering hairdressers to be able to help their clients when they're faced with a situation that in a domestic violence situation or an elder abuse situation within the salon. Sonia and her team have created an Australian first online training program. It takes around 45 minutes to complete the training modules, which help hairdressers better understand domestic and family violence and then know how to advise their clients. And point survivors in the direction of help. There was DB Connect, there was a few places she referred me to and they were all really helpful. Sonia's already helped hundreds of clients and is urging the 67,000 hairdressers and barbers around the country to do the same. K McGrath, 7 News. Most professional sports have had to adapt during the pandemic and skydiving is no different. For the first time, Melbourne judges are examining jumps that are taking place in Queensland. Soaring sky high. It's fun. So much fun. <laughs> Hundreds of Aussies are free falling from 12,000 feet this weekend, hoping to be crowned the nation's skydiving champion. It's one of many sports impacted by COVID. Instead of gathering together, there are jumps this weekend in Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia and WA. It's changed the team style the way they usually go. But, you know, to keep jumping, that's what we have to do. So we, we're quite happy to do that so we can keep skydiving. The competition broadcast online for all to see. That's been really interesting and uh, really beautiful. It's lovely to watch people in other states jumping as well. Teams across Australia will spend the next three days competing, recording every jump on camera for judges watching from Melbourne. Including one of Australia's first all-female team, the Bellas. We're very much about empowering women in adventure sport and this is definitely one of those <laughs> one of those ones where I um, really wanted to start my coaching out with an all-girls team. The winner will be decided after all teams have jumped. An adrenaline pumping sport now taken to the next level. Anna McGraw, 7 News. Andrew McCormack is here with Sport and Macca. Two of footy's biggest coaches have been left stunned. That's right, Mike. Damien Hardwick says it's a different game in 2021, while Nathan Buckley is concerned as well. We'll have the reasons why after the break, as the wounded magpies count the cost of an expensive final dress rehearsal. Plus, the perfect audition for round one, an incredible bag for a young hawk at Arden Street. Adam Gilchrist 2.0 stuns the cricket world with a knock that hurts Australia just as much as England. And what's caught Jason Day's eye on the PGA Tour? Chris Hemsworth on a mission to save the world. It's not going to save itself. The premiere, Men in Black International. Tonight, 7.30 on 7. The stylish Havel Edge 2. A globally engineered, European designed and feature packed SUV. From just 22,990 drive away. Have a H2 Auto. Go with more. Pretty soon, the amount of super paid on top of our wages will go up. And up. And up. And up. 
all the way to 12% guaranteed. That extra money will make a big difference when I retire. Put my feet up. You see, your future is even more super. There's more to love and more to save at Beacon. Get up to 50% off all lights, fans, globes, everything in-store or online. That's up to 50% off everything store-wide. Hurry ends next Sunday. We have a job to do, all of us, to protect what we love, our team. We know what to do. It's simple. Bat, bowl, detto. What's going on? eBay Tuesdays. Heaps of deals every Tuesday. How are those reports going? On things like noise cancelling headphones. Is that ham? We should get sushi, Carol. What was that, Greg? They're yelling. Say hello to the future. Hello, future. And maybe it will answer. Valeno is the Stockomobile. Looking good. You know, you have beautiful eyes. On now at Harvey Norman, save up to 55% off Sealy Foster Pedic exquisite discontinued floor stock mattresses and ensembles. This is your chance to buy a quality Australian made mattress at an amazing price. Now's the time to upgrade your mattress and support Australian made manufacturing with up to 55% off Australian made Sealy Foster Pedic exquisite discontinued floor stock mattresses and ensembles. Plus, take advantage of 60 months interest free and receive a bonus gift card up to $500. Now at Harvey Norman. You can't go past IGA for hundreds of weekly specials right across the store. Like Kettle Chips 175 gram varieties, $3. And Uncle Toby's Plus Cereal 820 gram varieties, $3.75. Half price. Now at your local IGA. Prince Charming is looking for Cinderella. They text and go to the same school. It shouldn't be this hard to find her. She's not just some chick. I mean, we had a connection. Oh. I can't take my mind off you. I need to know who you are. Chad Michael Murray and Hilary Duff in A Cinderella Story, tonight on 7 Flicks. Welcome back. Geelong's three big recruits will be unleashed in tonight's pre-season clash with the Bombers returning to Tom Brown down at the Cattery. And Tom, it will be a near full-strength side for last year's grand finalists. The Cats, Andrew, all in for 2021. And apart from Taylor and Ablett, who, as we know, have retired, just four changes tonight compared to their grand final losing sides to Geelong. Very much focused on a full-strength side. Plenty of Bombers fans here eagerly anticipating their progress. They've made the trip down the highway. A brief update, Andrew, on Michael Hurley, who's battling this debilitating uh, infection. I've spoken to Bombers sources during the week. I don't think they hold out much hope he'll play this year. He has made some progress eating-wise by himself this week and there's some hope that he could play perhaps later in the season. Collingwood meantime promising signs for them last night they've got some concerning injuries for side bottom and in particular Kelly. Nathan Buckley kept an eye on the VFL practice match the Pies counting the cost of their six point loss to Richmond. Steel side bottom had his calf assessed confident he'll be okay for round one in 13 days. Yeah, it's not too bad um, I don't think I've done it I just felt a little bit tired and um, it's probably not worth risking it and missing out on round one. I've never done a calf, but I didn't have an episode where I've, you know, I felt something pop. Will Kelly breaking his collarbone. The luckless forward had surgery late last night and will miss up to eight weeks. Damien Harbick and Nathan Buckley flagging. Contentious rule changes are seeing more space and less pressure. It's a different game. You know, we took 120 uncontested marks. That's normally a... You know, two game total for us, so uh, it's a different look and we'll uh, do a little bit of work on that. I haven't played you know, a, a normal length game for you know, nearly 18 months. It was a very open game. We were all talking about the man on the mark, but 75 rotations with an extra 20 minutes of footy is going to be the biggest test. And the Saints have indicated veteran James Frawley will miss at least two weeks with a hamstring injury. The setback raising questions about his potential impact this season. 
It's the second time the 32-year-old has injured the same hamstring since arriving at St Kilda in December. Jake Carlisle, who played reserves for St Kilda yesterday, likely to get the call-up. Tom Brown, 7 News. An unknown hawk from a familiar footy family has given Alistair Clarkson plenty to think about ahead of round one. Jacob Kaczynski kicked six goals in three quarters at Arden Street this afternoon as North Melbourne's struggles continue heading into season 2021. It's a harsh lesson, but better learn now than in round one. He just took a step, and it was just one step, but that's the rule. New faces looking to impress in new colours. Jaden Stevenson playing on a wing, keen to find his place in the north midfield, while there were some teething issues for Jack Zeeble's switch to half-back. You would be concerned if you're in the North Melbourne coach's box seeing what is happening to Jack Zeeble in the first half. The Hawks unearthed some talent up forward. Oh, top of the square, it looked dangerous and he's got it again. Tumbling in Kaczynski. Cousin of former St Justin, Jacob Kaczynski took his chance with both hands. Heading into his third season on the Hawks list, the 20-year-old had a pre-season day out at Arden Street. Kaczynski might kick his sixth goal. Oh, he's going to make it very difficult for them not to pick him in round one. Cut from the Paul Piopolo mould, Tyler Brockman was lively. Pick 46 in last year's draft, the WA recruit looks a lock for round one. For three goals in his first quarter. Changuth Jarth, known as CJ, a standout in defence and one to watch heading into a new era at Waverley, developing the next generation, the priority in 2021 for Alistair Clarkson. We're probably unlikely to be challenging for silverware this year, but we're injecting a lot of young kids into our group and uh, we're, we're just building for the future. But plenty of work to do for David Noble with another heavy pre-season defeat looming for North. Other options there, Jason. Australia's T20 squad will waste no time returning home to, uh, from New Zealand, rather flying back straight after tomorrow's T20 decider. The Aussie spinners did the damage last night to level the series at two all with a 50 run win over the Kiwis in game four. It was a long day for Aaron Finch's side who were shaken out of their beds by the earthquake off the North Island coast. I think I woke up 2.29 and, and the my room was shaking. I thought I was having a dream. A couple of our guys might have run straight to the fire exit and straight down to reception. Meanwhile, Peter Hanscom has played a lone hand with a knock of 73 as Victoria were bowled out for 199 in the first innings of their Sheffield Shield clash with Tasmania at the MCG. It stumps on day two. The Vicks trail by 58 runs. And Cameron Green is a staggering 182 not out in WA's match against Queensland, notching his seventh first class century. Indian keeper batsman Rishabh Pant drew praise from Adam Gilchrist after a stunning rear guard century against England. Oh dear, just when you think you've seen it all with Rishabh Pant, he tells you, hang on, there's much more to me. The audacity to play a reverse sweep against Jimmy Anderson with the new ball. Oh, Unbelievable shot. India leads by 116 on day three of the final test. Australia needs England to win to qualify for the World Test Championship final. It was a thrilling finish to the Group 1 Australian Cup at Flemington. In the feature race of the day over 2,000 metres, Jai McNeil guided Holmesman home in a fitting tribute to the late Michael Gadinsky, who was a part owner. Best of days and Holmesman. Holmesman with the music man cheering above and also best of days a photo. Meantime, Zutori can now lay claim to being one of the best sprinters in the country, upsetting the favourites in the new market handicap. It's the five-year-old getting's first Group 1 win. And Jason Day had his eye on a few birdies in Florida, just the wrong kind during the second round of the Arnold Palmer Invitational. His drive at 16 hit the trees and was eventually spotted sitting in a bird's nest. It took a pair of binoculars, a TV camera and a photographer to confirm it was Day's ball. I'm a bird's going to come back and find another egg there, so it's, uh, it's unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> that led to a double bogey with day seven shots off the lead at two under. The real eagle eyes were lurking in the sky above Bay Hill and earned the catch of the day. Arnold Palmer's uh, tournament, maybe a touch of Arnie there in that one. Yeah, lots of puns about birdies and eagle eyes. Thank you, <laughs> Macca. Melina is next with the forecast. Live from Moomba and Mel, how's the rest of the long weekend looking? Mike, tomorrow is heating up, but it doesn't last all long weekend. I'll have the details next.
the game you loved as kids is now the fastest show on the planet. That was just awesome. This is the ultimate tag arena. Unbelievable. Blink and you'll miss it. And it belongs to some of the most fearsome predators on Earth. She terrifies me. With only one thing on their minds. Tag. Making the tag. Everyday Aussies will take on these superhuman athletes. Yeah, it's safe to say that I'm nervous. There'll be highs oh! and lows. Oh my gosh. Can we get a medic? Can you tell me where we are? It's like nothing you've ever seen before. Unbelievable! And there's only one rule. Don't get caught. Who will have what it takes? This is outstanding stuff. To be crowned champion. Ultimate Tag on 7. It all starts tomorrow, 7 o'clock. Get more of what you need to lose weight with new My WW Plus. It's like my own personal trainer. It helps you to see the progress that you've made and motivates you to go further. More holistic, more personalised, more weight loss. Join now and get three months free. Domino's $5 pizza, having it delivered to your car for no extra charge. $5 pizzas, bring it in. Right now, NAB's two-year fixed-rate home loan is our lowest fixed rate ever. That means our customers get more clarity around their home loan so they can get on with life. Because what is money for, if not for a home? NAB, more than money. Nine out of ten Aussie women recommend Always Discreet for bladder leaks. It's incredible bladder protection in a pad this thin, with a super absorbent core that turns liquid to gel and locks it away. Get your free pack today. Are we there yet? Are we thinking of the planet? Are we helping people move? So, are we there yet? Every day we move closer. Oh, what a feeling, Toyota. Macca's biggest and best ever loose change menu with more of your favourites. And for a limited time, you can grab a Happy Meal for just $4. A little goes a long way at Macca's. Prices are falling like leaves during the next Garley Autumn Sale. Save up to 40% on a huge selection of quality living, dining and bedroom furniture. The next Garley Autumn Sale, in store and online now. Looks like members are getting free and faster deliveries with eBay+. Plus. It's like the Fast and the Furious in here. I found the Furious. There's so much good stuff happening in the city, and I don't want to miss a thing. Can't miss the NTV. Interesting. Exquisite. Who are you? Come at me, fashion. Palm is lunch. Can't miss this. Can't miss that. Can't miss a flick. Can't miss my train. So get to the city or get FOMO! They'll try any excuse. Tell me what you're under the influence of. I've got lazy eyes. They'll use every trick. This is a fraudulent document. To get through our border. There's something in there that shouldn't be in there. New Aussie border can see right through them. I feel fit, all right. New Aussie border security, next up on 7. This weather report brought to you by Metricon's Love Celebration, on now. Hello again, live from the Moomba Festival. After a string of cool and gloomy days, it was so nice to see some blue skies and sunshine today. The city started on a low of 14 and made it to a top of 19 degrees. It is currently 18 out here right now. It was a sunny day statewide. Swan Hill got to 29 degrees, which was our highest maximum around the state. A large high pressure system is bringing us that sunshine and generally fine weather but an inland low pressure trough will extend into western Victoria on Sunday moving over central and eastern parts of the state early in the week. Meanwhile a ridge will strengthen over southern Victoria associated with that high pressure system over the bite. So we will be warming up on Sunday as our winds turn northerly. Temperatures will move into the high 20s in the south, low to mid 30s in the north but the heat and the sunshine 
doesn't last all long weekend. We will have milder conditions across the south on Monday with a cool and showery change. The cloud returns once again and there's the risk of showers across the state but nothing too significant. Around the nation for tomorrow a shower or two in Brisbane 28 degrees partly cloudy with a top of 27 for Sydney. Cloudy and 28 degrees in Adelaide and Perth is partly cloudy with a top of 29. Thanks to the sun coming out in Victoria our temperatures will be significantly warmer. Cloud will build from the west during the afternoon and the evening and isolated showers are possible in the southwest late in the day. Light to moderate northerly winds help push those temperatures up tomorrow. Closer in, there's the chance of fog in the early morning. Then it'll be a mostly sunny day, but cloud will move in during the afternoon and evening. We'll have bright sunshine in the city, but cloud will re-increase later in the day, 12 overnight before a top of 28 degrees. Then we have a shower or two on Monday, 22. Cloudy and 21 degrees on Tuesday. A little sunshine on Wednesday, 21. Cloudy on Thursday, 22 degrees. Friday is looking nice, partly cloudy and 25 degrees. And next Saturday is looking lovely, a top of 27 with a change later in the day. And it's sunny tomorrow in the city with cloud increasing in the afternoon and a top of 28 degrees. So make the most of the warm sunshine because those cooler conditions return <laughs> on Monday. Mike. OK, thanks, Mel. And that's 7 News. We'll have updates throughout the evening. For now, from the team, have a great night.